you know, we, we, we're so grateful to, to be able to see one another and feel one another the way we're doing this right now. Um, what is very important here is that whenever I release my first uh, video on this pandemic, I call it the global equalizer. The global equalizer is still speaking wherever it is right now. But um, it's so good to see every one of you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Um, we are not very sure as yet when we will behold each other in person. And whenever we speak, whenever we are gathered, wherever you might be, always remember, do not take it lightly. You are not CNN, you are not, you know, ABC, you are not one of those news channels. They speak what they what they paid, what they're paid to say. They say what they're paid to say. And they look for news where they, they, they find what sells. And many times uh, we as children of God, uh, we are so caught up into communicating the same thing they're communicating. And, but whenever we are gathered as children of God and we, every day we wake up before we go to sleep, we must remember we are not them. What makes the difference here is that we have God. We are the children of God and we have the word of God. Other than any news that they might have, we have the ultimate news. We have the ultimate news. And so we have to behave like we have the ultimate news. Hmm. We have to behave like we have the best news. There is, uh, they, they, we, we have to not only behave but that, like we have the best news, but our lives must show. Yes. Our life must reflect that the news is not something out of our mouth, but it's the, the way we live. And so in the midst of so many questions, the world is looking for answers and they're looking for solutions. And so to have a solution, for us to have a solution is very simple. Jesus says, if two can agree, just two. Mm -hmm. It could be this child that I'm looking at here on Norma's phone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just two. Any two. Mm -hmm. But there must be an agreement. Mm -hmm. There must be an agreement. And in our church world, we kind of agree. Uh, uh, I, 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 we agree. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody is asking any <laughs> questions. And we are asked to agree. <laughs> and uh, while many people are praying, a lot of times we really do not agree. <laughs> when it's all said and done, we say amen to something we really did not agree on. How is that going to work? Hmm. How is God going to find agreement? Because we practice bowing our heads and closing our eyes and think that everybody, because they bow their heads or close their eyes, they're all in agreement. Hmm. So, so that is something that must be challenged. For hmm. us to agree on something, it must be deliberated. We must ask questions. And we don't have to necessarily agree with our eyes closed. We can agree with our eyes open. The prayer of agreement is not necessarily with our eyes closed. Hmm. It's when we discuss and we agree. And so if two shall agree, that's a great way to go. Two shall agree. Can you imagine the first two brothers 
Cain and Abel could not agree. They could not agree on a common issue of worship. Can you imagine that? The first two sons that were born could not agree on a common worship. Hmm. And you know what it resulted in? Global pandemic. Hmm. <laughs> it agree in the hmm. death of a quarter of the population. Hmm. Did you realize that? Hmm. When one man died out of four, it was quarter of the population that died. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel, one got murdered. And not just died, got murdered. So you know why I'm saying that? That's our history. Uh -huh. That's our history. Not only is that our history, what I want to make us aware of is that who was behind writing that history. Huh. You know, has to be as the Jagger said, who was behind writing that history? Huh. And so when we see how history was written way back then, how life was changed, this what we are going through now is no match to what happened then. It's no match to what happened there. What that will let us know, Joe, is the same spirit at work. Mm -hmm. As long as the goal is accomplished, it does not matter what method is being used. It does not matter what method is being used as long as the goal is accomplished. And what is the goal of darkness? What is the goal of the enemy? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And we should not be surprised when we see that being realized, whatever form it takes. And so I pray that, you know, some things, but Terry is not going to just surprise us. You know, we are not going to be surprised. That is why when Solomon spoke, he said, for everything under the sun in Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time and a season of purpose. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Pastor Janak, what he said is that I don't want you to be surprised by the season. I want you to be prepared for the season. As cold as is it right now in the U.S., it's just a matter of time, and it's going to be 90 degrees some, sometime in the month of July. Mm -hmm. Just wait a little bit. And because you have been living there for a while, or wherever we live, like, I mean, it, it really rained today, this morning in Guyana. But I'm prepared. And the least we could do is be prepared. What has happened to the church is like, it looked like so many times they are surprised like everybody else. They, it looked like sometimes they are more surprised than anybody else. <laughs> and so we are not supposed to be surprised. Jesus told us very clearly, these times will come, perilous times will come. This is the beginning of sorrow. There's a reason why he said, they that endure to the end. Endure to the end mean, does not mean that we're going to enjoy coming to the end. It's going to take some kind of endurance to come to the end. Huh. You know, so these things are not taking us by surprise, Sister Sharda. We are prepared. You know, I, I mean, uh, Pastor B, we are prepared for this. And that's what we do as preachers. All we do is go Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday, is to prepare our congregation for times like these. Hmm. Huh. And so in that preparation, 
In those moments when we are not prepared, or when we find it difficult to be prepared, you know, something happens. Something happens. And, you know, it is scary when life is going good, you know. For me, the scariest time in my life is when everything is going good. I don't know how many of you feel like that. But when everything is going well and nice, no pain, I mean, you're doing well. You know, Pastor Joe, you're doing good. You're healthy. Money is flowing, family. When things are going well, that's a scary time for me because the only thing it could turn to <laughs> is not so good. Hmm. So Job, so my short message today, there's this man, Job, that fears God. He turns away from evil. The man is having a great life. Everything is working for him. Everything is working for him. And suddenly, the same devil that his objective is to steal, to kill, and destroy, he shows up when the sons of God shows up to God. And he said, what is he even doing there, Pastor B? What is, even, what is the devil even doing there? You know, when I see God one of these days, you know, whenever <laughs> that time comes, I'm going to ask God, why did he didn't put him in the bottomless pit one time? Hmm. Why did he have to allow him to come to the earth to give us hell? Hmm. If there was a place prepared for the devil, God in his wisdom could have, what you would say is a charter, so you don't have to deal with this thing. Just put him in hell one time. Hmm. But I, you know, I, I, I was reasoning with the Lord on, on this on this topic, and I said, God, why did you send him to the earth? And you know, you want worship, and you want your children to come forth on the earth. Why did you send him to the earth? <laughs> and God said very clearly, and this is what I'm saying to you. I have given you what it takes to deal with him. Hmm. I have given you all that is necessary to deal with him. But you have not dealt with him properly. Hmm. Hmm. We have given him an opportunity to be big and bad. He's not big and bad as we think he is. Hmm. We have the tools. We have the word. We have the spirit. We have two-thirds still of the host of angels working for us and with us. And we have the spirit of God working in us. You know, and so he shows up here uh, and he's questioning Job. And, and God said, okay, you want to touch Job, touch him. And, and, you know, and I can't go through the details of everything. You know what I'm talking about. And he said, listen, Job said, I can't touch the man. I can't touch him. <laughs> because you have something around him. And I want to say to you, especially all of you here, and those under your influence, your family, you have that same thing around you. Hmm. It's a hedge of protection that is from the Lord himself, that is Hallelujah. just for you. Hallelujah. God help us today. Hmm. Not to be influenced by the news that we see. But to feel that edge of protection that you have promised us. And let us know that this word that we have preached to strangers and others and they believed it. Let us speak it to our own selves and let us believe our own word. Which is your word. And so what happened is that God said, all right, you do what you got to do. Go, go mess with him. And so what happened? One of the things that happened here, Bishop Andrew, is that there was the underlying, there was an underlying something in the life of Job. And that is why whenever his children will be gathered, he will pray to God. 
and he will say, God, in case they did anything wrong, I repent on their behalf. What, what other thing is happening here is that whenever these bad news came and his children died and his cattle and he was losing his business, whenever he lost business, he lost income, he lost family. The Bible says in Job 1.20 that Job arose, tore his clothes, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down to the ground and worshipped. And so in the midst of his greatest loss, he worshipped. It means that who Job was in the Lord was not by the things, was not, he was not faithful or committed because of his possession. He was faithful and committed because that's who the man was. Mm -hmm. And then he spoke these words that we speak ever so often. Verse 21. And he said, naked came out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord given, the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then it says in the next verse, in all of this, Job did not charge God foolishly. Hmm. Friends, beware. Mothers and fathers, beware today. Don't charge God because of an economic downturn. Do not charge God because friends will come and they will say all the wrong things. On Christ the solid rock we stand. Hallelujah. And we are not going to charge God. Mm. We are not going to listen to what the doctors and what the failed economic and failed medical system is saying, and we're going to charge God because men failed. Lift up your eyes and look to the hills from whence cometh your health. Your, your health, your health comes from an unfailing God. Hallelujah. Do not be discouraged. Be strengthened today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Your faith will rise over every fear. Death and the spirit of death will not have any way in your mind, in your life, and in your home. When Job looked around, everything was dark and gloomy. Everything was dismal and everything was going down. But the man refused to go down because in his heart he said, naked I came. These things God had lent to me for a season for me to have a good life. And without it, my life is not dependent on that. Who I am in God is not because of what I have in my hand. It is because of what I have in my heart. Oh. And Job did not charge God foolishly. Eventually, he's going to say some things. Hmm. Men and women, I want to speak to something that is not very, we don't say it. There's a part of our life that we don't say. And only us know that part of our lives. And when Job was touched, and not only he lost his children, he's going about, whenever his wife looked at him and said, curse God and die, it can't get worse than that. Hmm. Whatever people from your congregation, people from your household are saying, well, do something about it, do something about it. Do something about it, Daddy. Hmm. And when you're lost for words, well, if you can't do anything, why don't you just curse God and die? Remember there was a man who brings you this before you. Hmm. And he's not crumble. He's not crumbling. He's not bowing down. He's not giving in and he's not going to die. Hmm. 
But in Terry, there is a man who been through. Uh -huh. Yes. Apostle? 15 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. When? Verse 15 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Whenever Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun, that which has been will be. And that which is now will come again. There is nothing new. There is nothing new under the sun. All you got to do is be prepared for it. Death is not a new thing. All we got to do is be prepared for it. How do we prepare to die? How do we prepare for death? We do not prepare for death by laying down straight and saying, God, take me. We prepare for death by the way we live. How we live, we will know if we are ready to die. While death is departure, we know who will be our welcoming party, what arrival will be like. Hmm. So we do not speak the word of the world. We are not afraid of that. We know someday, somehow, sometime, we are not the first and we are not going to be the last. But the way we prepare to die is the way we live. Job is not really afraid to die. Because the man is managing his life. Pastor Azam, good to see you. The man is managing his life. And how we manage our daily affair, how we manage our life today, is how we will know how prepared we are. Mm. So people around us are looking at us if we are really prepared. How prepared are we? So sons and daughters of God, here is Job. But it's something underlying in his life. And this is what I want to highlight here, Pastor Bacchus. In the life of Job, while he's doing very well, and his wife and everybody has said what they had to say, he turns around and he makes a confession. Huh. Pastor Balo, he makes a confession. And this is what he said. Mm -hmm. In Job 3 and 25. Mm -hmm. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. Mm -hmm. In the midst of my life of faith, I had some things that I never wanted to happen. I had some fear that nobody knew that I'm afraid one day this thing will happen. And he said, the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which was I afraid of is come upon me. And I want to speak to that part of our lives today. In the midst of our success, in the midst of everything going well, what is that thing that you're so concerned about? What is that thing that you never want this thing to be made public? You never want this thing to happen to you, Brother Tim. Never want this thing to happen to you. Huh. Because the way it's going to be perceived, the way it's going to show, the way it's going to appear. And we could see right here that whenever Job was in this state, his friends came to him and said, said to his face, his very friend said, Job, you sin. Hmm. You did wrong. And inside, I want us to take a moment to examine that thing inside of us. You know, like us that have pastors and leaders that have children, the last thing we want is our children to backslide. The last thing, we fear that thing, that our children will grow up and go to the world or take an ungodly husband or wife, you know. 
And that is an underlying fear that no pastor, no minister want their children to go, to go out there. No leader want their children to go out there and be a part of that. Because it comes back to us and makes us feel responsible and makes us feel so bad. And what I want to say here today is that, like for us that are pastors, we have members, we have people that we love and we are praying for, and the last thing we want is for to hear that one of them died or they got sick. Now this fear of this pandemic, the last thing we want to hear is that one of our loved ones have tested positive and is in the ICU and is on ventilator or anything like that. That's the very last thing anybody wants to hear. Hmm. And Job is saying the very thing, the thing that I fear has come upon him. But what is that thing that has come upon him? What is that thing that he was afraid that came upon him? I don't know how much you thought about that. What is that thing that this man was afraid of that came upon him? And I believe is when we are going through tough times, when we are going through challenging times as men and women that love God, what is going to be our friend's view Hmm. Our loved one view, the world's view, now it looks like we are going under. What will be their view on us for the stand that we took for righteousness and for the kingdom of God? What are they going to say when it looks like all that we said and all that we stood up for is taking this big hit. How are we going to deal with this? But Job, this is a time he had some regrets. Hmm. He's going to eventually say some things. But God will speak. And I want you to know, men of women of God, I don't know what's your fear. I don't know what's your gravest and greatest concern, but all of us have some concerns. We don't want to die and leave our children. We are so concerned for our church and our, the, 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 the sheep that God has given oversight over, that God has allowed us to watch over their souls. Hmm. The fear of failing or falling from grace. And so he's living with this and he's scratching his skin and the boils. And other than dealing with people that got him wrong, he's got to deal with himself. He's got to deal with himself and what he stood up for. And when? When he was at this place in life, I don't know how much he wanted to give up, but a man is holding on. And friends, I want to encourage you today. You only you know there are some things you will never say, but you're facing it and you're bearing it and you're praying it out. You will never say it. Nobody will ever know it. Only you and God knows that. Some deep things that you're concerned about. But I want you to know, no matter how concerned you are about this world and what it's going through and what people are saying about you and God and the church, God was getting ready to speak. And when God spoke to Job, God spoke to Job he said some words. He said, Job, let me remind you of a few things, son. Where were you when the world was formed? Hmm. 
Where were you when I created the oceans? Where were you when I created the Leviathan to play in the sea, in the depth of the ocean? Where were you, Job? Where were you when I made water to work in circuits? That no matter how much fresh water fall in the ocean, it will still remain salted. Where were you, Job? So I want to speak to our minds today. As smart, as godly as we are. Let us open our hearts and our eyes to God. The creator. And while we are so concerned. And sometimes we are so worried. I believe he's asking the same question. I believe he's saying the same thing. Don't be worried, my children. It's not going to help. Don't take this personally. It's not going to help. And he's asking the same question. Where were you when I set the world in motion? Where were you? And God is saying to us today, your worrying is not going to help. But understanding that we brought nothing in this world and we take nothing, we will take nothing out of this world. Do not charge God foolishly and do not answer foolish questions from foolish people. You just lift up your eyes and know that God is in charge. Yes. And in the right time, when God is getting, when God is ready to put the sickle in the ground, God will reap a harvest from this earth. And when it looks like we are lost for words and we don't know what to say, and it looks like people are not hearing anything from God, I want you to, from the man and women of God, I want you to know that God is speaking for himself. Hallelujah. And God spoke and he said some things to Job that I am still a God. And Job, no matter how low you get, your final breath is up to me. No matter how bad it looks, your final breath is up to me. Today, I declare over your lives that the final of you is not up to you. What the church will be and what we shall all be is not up to us. It's up to the one who holds over tomorrow. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, men and women of God, the one who held the tomorrow, the next day for Job, when it was so bad, is the one who holds our tomorrow. Our tomorrow is not in our hand. Our tomorrow is in the hand of God. He kept us from since then and he's able to keep us again. The church is the most sought after sought after body to be destroyed from day one from the day of Christ to now it was always the Bible was burned so many times in history they tried to destroy the church but I encourage you men and women of God the, the world the devil and darkness couldn't destroy the church then and he cannot destroy the church now because the future of the church is not in our hand. We are in the hand of God. Hmm. And he will keep Hallelujah. his church. And he will build his church. And we yes, are his church, the ecclesia. When you can't build yourself, you are in the hand of God and he is keeping his church today. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. Do not doubt you're in the hand of God. And he will keep you. So I declare over our lives and over your lives and over your home and families and your local church. And all those who have influence over. The Lord bless and keep and strengthen. The Lord watch over you. Do not be afraid. 
in the end, we know the story. He was blessed double. It took a while before God spoke, but God did speak. And no matter how long it takes in this pandemic and in this current crisis, and it looked like God is not saying anything, do not rush it. Do not force it. Do not fight it. He will speak in the right time. But right now, let me say a few words to you. I've already said a few words. I want you to know it's so good to see you today. My love and prayers are with you. Don't give up. Do not give up. Do not give in. Do not throw in the towel. The fight is not over. Can we be like the Apostle Paul? I've run the course. I've kept the faith. Amen. I've endured this race to the end. I'm not giving in. Timothy, I'm not giving in. I'm going to keep it to the end. So I declare over all of you, myself and my family, the local church, that we will keep it on to the end. The Lord bless you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you for this moment. Thank yes, you for Lord. this hour. Thank yes. you, Lord, for all these wonderful men and women of God. Yes, Almighty God. God and everlasting. We agree today. We agree that you will speak. Yes. And you are speaking. Mm. And Lord, the latter will be greater than the former. So we declare, mm. oh God, over our lives, oh God, in the name of you. And we accept, Lord, the way you have blessed Job in the end. We will live and yes, see God. that you will bless us double and more in the end. Yes, God. I thank you and I praise you. We give you all the glory. Yes, God. As we rest our faith in you. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.